Hello everybody, good evening, if you can hear me. Um, I'm trying to bring uh, some people on stage. Uh, so give me a few minutes uh, to, to do that. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone and welcome again this evening. And this is our final session for this Success Converge, and we're very, very grateful to God and excited to have the opportunity to round it up. So um, I want to bring the participants in the Disrupting Mediocrity Challenge on stage so that we can have a quick conversation with them before we kick off today. So I see that Uja Martins is already here. So let me bring him off stage. So Martins, if you can hear me, I'm bringing you stage now, I'm bringing you up stage. I don't know if you've gotten it. Um, uh, Victoria Olije. I'm bringing you on stage now as well. It's a user cannot be invited to state as they have joined the mobile device. Joined to mobile, the mobile device. So. So, uh, Martins, I can't bring you on stage again. It's telling me you joined through mobile device. So, um, I don't know what that means. So I'm bringing you back now. I think you're, you're, you're all right. What's happening? Let's wait a bit to see if we can get, um, get them on stage. People invite on stage. Okay, Martins, you are on stage now. Victoria Uti, you are using mobile, so still having problem getting you on stage. Hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Welcome on stage. Welcome on stage. Thank you, sir. My camera, uh, there's a malfunction. I can put my video on. It's okay, but we need to hear you a little bit, a little bit more. You were, you were a bit away from the microphone or something like that. So we can. Okay. How is it now? Is it better? Yeah, it's better now. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. okay. okay. Uh, Victoria, uh, the two Victorias, um, you have to use the Chrome, uh, Google Chrome app on your phone. You have to open the Google Chrome app and type in the link into it i think or something like that to be able to access the the video and camera i mean video uh, camera and microphone features without that i can't bring you on stage so um, i'm not going to take too much time because we 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 have a long conversation tonight 
um, with our last speaker. So I'm going to to kick off with Martin since Martin is the one that is on stage here at the moment. So anybody, can you see me? Hello, hi, good to see you. Yeah. Hi. All right, all right. So um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to um, Disruptive Mediocrity. Uh, that's the theme of this particular Success Converge. And um, yesterday evening, we kicked off uh, the, the event and had a very, very, very wonderful session, very, very wonderful and powerful session that um you know we're all you know inspired and geared up to to you know think differently about you know success and excellence and i was truly truly impacted and then this morning was like i told the speaker after the session that his session was actually for me you know it was truly truly organized for me and um i truly enjoyed enjoyed listening to our second speaker this morning and I was really blessed by her session as well. So tonight we're going to have um, Mr. Isaac Idoko share with us um, and when we get to that session. But before then, we we ran a 14-day event, a 14-day challenge in the group called Disrupt, Disrupt Mediocrity Challenge. And the, the challenge required that people in the group would um, post every day for 14 days on any topic that they like any topic that they have expertise in, just to share their knowledge and skills and, uh, and gifts and talents and expertise with the group and be a blessing to everybody. And uh, we did that and had a very, very wonderful session, a wonderful 14 days consecutively. And we have some people who are going to, I mean, who, uh, you know, emerge as winners uh, during the competition. So we just want to have a conversation with them. And um, after that, we're, we're going to um, announce, uh, the, you know, the different prizes and uh, who and who came first and second and uh, and third. So for Victoria, uh, the two Victorias, interestingly, two of you have the same first name, um, but you're unable to join. But see the message from any tongue in the chat that says, um, change your settings on your Google Chrome to desktop. So you will be able to access um, all that features on the app. Okay, so that's the way you do it. So go to your um, settings, look for Google Chrome. Um, I mean, go to your your app stores or app wherever you have all the apps downloaded. Look for Google Chrome on on the list of the apps. Open it, and then change the setting of the Google Chrome app to desktop. If you do that, you will be able to come on stage, right? So let me say it again. Um, uh, go to your app uh, list of apps, look for Google Chrome, open it, go to the settings and change the settings from mobile, I think, to desktop. If you do that, you'll be able to come on stage. So um, I hope you get that quickly and then, okay, so I can see uh, Olije is, I'm sending you a rest, a, a, an invite now. So kindly accept that while I also send uh, the other Victoria. So Victoria, Olije, I have sent you a request to come on stage. Okay, it says you left the event, event. so uh, I don't know. Okay, well, I'll keep checking on, on both of you and see if you, you are ready to come on stage. But in the meantime, let's talk with the man of the moment, the one that is able to come on stage to join us. So um, good evening, Martins. How are you doing? Good evening, sir. Good to have you. Sir, pretty, sir. Uh, what's happening around you today? I'm doing good. It's been a very engaging, exciting day. Looking yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Thank you very much for being a, a member of the group, part of um, our group on Facebook, uh, Life Excel Resource Center Facebook group. And thank you very much for also uh, participating in the challenge. 
Um, we 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 were very much inspired by all the things that you shared during the course of the challenge. So we just thought maybe we should, we should just talk with you as one of the main participants who were match winners in the program. So can we, in you know, few few seconds, a few minutes, get to to know you? Tell us a little bit about you. Okay, so my name is Uja Martins. I'm from Kobe State. I graduated from Kobe State University, Faculty of Agriculture, and I happen to also have heard about life itself way back in school when I had my own uh, share of engagement with the platform and also had my own share of, uh, of, of blessing. I, I received my, oh, they're, they're, they're on stage now, okay. So I also received my own share of blessing from the platform. And apart from the impact of the group on my life, I, I recall that it was the platform where I, I I was able to reinstate my bond with Isaac Idogo to you know we I knew him way back, but it was then I got to know that he was a person of that kind of value and met him and James Adama. So um I am currently a professional photographer and a digital marketer and I'm based in Africa, work with a real estate firm and I also do freelance and also i've um i've self-authored a book two books wow besides, yeah one of them can you speak a bit louder please we would like to enjoy every conversation thank you yeah so i can you hear me louder sir yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure okay so i i there's there's two um self-published books one is the first one is titled the schooling entrepreneur and the second one is titled the science of certainty the science of what certainty wow this is beautiful this is beautiful yeah. can, can you tell us a bit about uh about that uh maybe in one or two minutes what was the second book on science of certainty all about okay the science of certainty is basically is a um is a 49 day um, series that more, is more like a non-religious daily devotional mm. based on the principle of an understanding that everything has a how to do. Everything has a how. And when people try to do things and it looks like it's not working, I, mm. I only believe that it's because there is something they are not doing right. Exactly. So everything, everything has a how, a why, a where, a when and for whom and it's an economic that we realize that there is there are these principles of that are featured or factored in the um, in the factors of production that mm -hmm. there has to be a reason for everything yeah. there has to be a way to do it the, which has to be precise and so the science of certainty talks about how to help you understand yourself first how to help you understand people and how to help you understand the environment around you so that we, we then understand within the book that man is born with the transfer of genetic code dna from parent to offspring mm. but also there is also a genetic code in every environment that that comes into a person so you can have a set of twins where one grows up in emenenga and another one grows up in america mm. by virtue of the environment where they are where they are they, they, they're living there are certain what I now call DNA in the environment that comes into them. So, and so the, the science of certainty is, is all about precision and accuracy in applying principles to get desired result. Perfect. So like every action has a corresponding result. Yeah. This is this is this is too powerful. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is too. This is too powerful. We, we need we need to read that book. Everybody on the on this uh, <laughs> on this session need to you know find that book and read. Now how so? How do we get a copy? If I want to get a copy of your book of that book, how do we get that? Yeah, so I have it on 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 Amazon, but I also have the the PDF. I started to to produce based on order at the time, but because I'm not really um done that kind of massive marketing where i can i can mass produce the price wasn't good enough 
So I started to sell soft copies and PDF only. So if anyone is in need, um, the easiest way is to reach out to me to also buy code the Amazon royalties for now. Mm. Perfect. How much is the book? It's selling for 2500 uh, only. All right. Thank you very much, Martin. So I'll come back to you. Um, um, Victoria, good evening. Can you hear me? Uh, your network has been a bit unstable uh, for a while, so I hope you will uh, be able to... Uh, she's off again. She's off again. Okay, so I'm, I'm already enjoying the session. It's, it's giving me an indication of what is going to happen this evening. So I'll continue with you, Martins, and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get, we'll get uh, Victoria. But mm -hmm. if not, we'll just... Um, um, you see, people are already amazed by what you just shared, uh, you know, already. Uh, so the the disruptive media critic challenge. Um, what, what motivated you to be part of it in the first instance? Well, knowing your, you know, you personally, you are a brand, and where it, it's been a while we heard from you. So when I saw the name, it was like, ah, what is I got up to this time? So mm -hmm. when I saw it, I'm like, it has to be something good. So, and then the recommendation, apart from, the recommendation came from my other brother, um, the person of Isaac and, and um, James. They were like, ah, this is the kind of thing I'd like to be part of because when I love competition. I love competing a lot in everything. Mm. It just helps me to check my competency per time. So I just love competing to engage myself with people. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, I also love to I also love to compete, but to compete with myself. So as soon as I was in that challenge, what I would have done was to uh, make sure I write every day for those fourteen days, but make sure also that I write better um, each day that I can get yeah. in condition. Um, yeah. That has always helped me um, uh, to to make sure that. I am always you know, pulling myself beyond a certain level to make sure that I don't even have the same level. Sure. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, any lessons learned from participating in that in that challenge? Have you ever you know, participated in such a challenge before, like doing something consecutively for a number of days? Um, the, the the, the number of days, no, I, I think this for me would be the first in terms of the duration. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, this, this was the first for me. right? So, one of, what are one or two lessons you've learned uh, participating in the challenge? Primarily, for me, among many lessons, the, the biggest one would be you know, you know, like the, the extra one I did, I I think it was captured, my lesson, biggest lesson was captured in my extra um, post, which I, I said that even though the challenge has ended, I'm unable to stop. So uh, it, uh, we understand, or it's not strange that habit is formed when yeah. a particular um, character is executed over time. Yeah. So, so 14 days was, you know, a lot of times we think it's not easy to make a post, even for business owners, the, the consistency is really hard because of the challenges of the time. Yeah. But because there was someone checking on us, there was a crown waiting at the end, all the factors put together, guarding the challenge, made it possible to, for us to go through the challenge. And at the end of the 14 days, it occurs to me that after all, it's not impossible. It's not impossible to show up every day. It's not impossible to do what looks like it's so hard. So I realized that um what what it did for me was to help me build that that um tensile strength that consistency that ability to now take from the challenge the, um, that ability to be consistent from the challenge and now i can relate it to other things in fact it was within the 14 days that i started to do to exercise so <laughs> Yeah, and I wanted, I've always wanted to do water therapy and do a number of push-ups in the morning. But because I knew that I have to wake up by 8 to write my post after meditation on something, because yeah. I always do mine in the morning, then mm -hmm. I, I started to wake up earlier, and then I started to drink water, I started to exercise. So it just makes me realize that 
it's all possible. It's all possible. The, the limit is only in our heads. You know? mm. So wow. it was really interesting for me. No, wow, 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 wow. This, this is really interesting how, um, you know, these things, you know, play out, helping you to build, uh, you know, a habit. Yeah, challenging you beyond your particular limit. I remember from 2014, right? I think 2013, 2014, 2015, I mm -hmm. I challenged myself with what I called last 70 days of the year. And what mm -hmm. was I doing? I was writing consecutively for 70 days, um, mm -hmm. the last 70 days of the year. And, you know, just like you said, it was as if it's uh, an unsurmountable task or mountain. But when I started it, I realized that yeah, I could do it. So I did it the first day. It worked. I was like, wow, this is, this is beautiful. And I got lots of traction. Lots of people were, you know, impacted and blessed by that. So the next year, I decided to try it again. And I did it for under 70 days. And... Third year, I did it again. I think even the third year, I brought a lot of people, people like uh, Mechanobis, people like uh, uh, Sam of Bafemi, Chris, Chukunyere, uh, even people from outside the country, you know, because it became yeah. so, so popular that uh, people even from outside yeah. the country, people from the US um, and the UK, you know, some of my friends, I invited them, you know, they participated in it. So you, you yeah. never can tell what you know, ability you have until you stretch yourself. Yeah, yeah. You never can tell what ability you have until you stretch yeah. yourself. And this is one thing that is unique with everybody yeah. in life, except we have a special way of stretching ourselves beyond um, beyond the limit. Um, thank you very much for sharing this with us. The last question I have for you is, what would be your advice to anyone who is afraid of engaging in a, in a challenging task that may help them, um, you know, build a build a habit um, or build capacity in a particular area. But then they require they require the 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 mind or the heart, the will to you know do something consistently. One advice you have for any such people? Okay, okay. So, um, like like James was sharing yesterday, James Adama, mm. about everything. He said everything that is of value never comes easy. Yeah. Yeah, he said that if, if it's not, if it's, um, I, I can't remember the exact word, but he was sharing from reference to the words of the pastor Dr. Paul and then he talked about that everything that is of value will always require some kind of discipline. Mm. So, and so I, I, I also, to, to re-emphasize that, I believe that low-hanging fruits are base. So what he said was that, that oh, good night, bro. Yeah. What he said was that if it comes too easy, if it comes too cheap, it's yeah. worthless. Mm. And so to add to that, I believe that if it comes too cheap, it might have, it might have a work, but it might be a bait. So that what you would pay in response for that may be costlier than whatever it is that it contains. Just mm. like what happens to the rat. Mm. As, as yummy as the fish is looking, the rat is going to come for it, but it's going to pay with its life. <laughs> now, just in that to say that, and, and also to, to quickly go back to the earlier, um, the, the earlier question you asked, it, I, it was in, in this same 14 days of the challenge, I started to copy my posts from Facebook because the challenge was not captured on LinkedIn. I would simply just remove the hashtag and just make a little adjustment and post on my LinkedIn. Okay. So in, the first, in the first one week, in the first seven days, my I was I was LinkedIn opened up my creator mode after wow. I, yeah. So my my followership grew, I think it was it was around 980, but now it's on 1,200. Oh my God. Yeah, just in the first few days. And so I would just write my post, put on Facebook, and then copy to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So why do we not post every day? There is the fear of what, what if people keep seeing me every day and get bored and be like, what is this one up to? Why are you showing up every day? Are you trying to show up? 
But I, I just realized that I nobody is responsible for, I, I'm responsible for myself. And so um, I have to be consistent to show or whatsoever I believe in. So my advice to anyone would be in, I think Life Excel basically consists of young people in the same age group and we have we still have a very long time to go in life so i think that you know a lot of there are people it was my friend who we're having a conversation with and she certainly said to me that there are people who have two heads so there is a head you're born with and there is a head you make for yourself and in the words of Ogotuko omegu he said your parents are responsible to bring you to earth but you are responsible to bring yourself to the world. Mm. And in bringing yourself to the world, you know that there is competition with yourself, like you say, with environmental factors, with all the things around you, the economy, the nation. It's not generally easy, but gravity is going to pull on all of us. And so if we must rise and take a flight like the airplane, then we have to combat against the force of gravity, the force of the low hunger hanging for the force to pulling us to want to be like everybody else because until you discover yourself you're going to live on that basic level and everyone among the um nearly eight billion people on earth is created to bring a particular difference to earth so mm -hmm. you can't be so excellent enough if you are not yourself being yourself is all the excellence you can be realizing yourself and leading it to the maximum with the understanding that just you is enough different to the world if you realize yourself so i mean realizing yourself it takes work so i really 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 think that uh being on the platform like Ex live excel alone is going to help us with the kind of mentors we have and the kind of programs that that we used to have and that's going to be unveiled i believe um a lot would happen so i just i just advise everyone to to do the hard work of discovering themselves and implementing, like in the words of James, and also stick around with mentors like you. And by God's grace, uh, Sky is the starting point. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> so my, my, I'm already full. Okay, so you need to allow the microphone. If you want to come on stage, sorry for the interruption. If you want to come on stage, I'm inviting you on the stage. If you want to come on stage, you need to allow the microphone. If you don't allow the microphone, you can't come on stage. So I'm receiving notification that you are rejecting the, you're blocking the microphone, and that's why you cannot come on stage. Uh, we can't wait for, uh, we can't keep waiting, all right? So, uh, Martin, thank you very, very much. I think that, um, um this is this is a very beautiful way to start this session tonight and then we're looking forward to engaging you um the more in the coming future so you know stick on uh let's hear from uh, uh olija can you hear me yes sir good evening how are you i'm fine good evening sir Good to finally be able to to get finally able to get you on on stage. We've been we've been battling to with getting you on stage all this while. Um, so we. Yes. Like with the, yeah. I was having serious network. All right, all right, all right. I hope that it will allow allow you to speak to us um, briefly uh, before we kick off the event. I guess you've been listening to the conversation with Martin so far, right? Hello. Oh, we've lost high again. We've lost high again. Uh, wow. I just hope that the government in Nigeria will will do something about powerful networks, you know, <laughs> internet connection in the country, because it's very very helpful. It was very, very helpful. Yeah. It was very, very helpful. Uh, so because of our time, we won't we won't wait for, for them. I'll just go straight to um, um, announce uh, the winners and then we we'll move to the rest of the of the program. So I'm going to share a screen. 
So um, I guess you you all see in my screen at the moment. So we run this we run this challenge in the group uh, for fourteen days. Um, um, sorry, it's the most. Uh, Sorry, uh, we ran this challenge called Disrupting the Gateway Challenge in the group, and our goal was to just, um, you know, challenge all the members um, yeah, yeah, in the group to to do something that they've not done before, um, and you know, to give them an opportunity to discover themselves in, in a particular area that they may not be able, to, they may not have known that they have the capacity or the power to do that, and um we set some of these prizes just like you can see on the screen uh to to reward people who participated in the in the uh, in the challenge consecutively for all the in the period of the days so we set the first prize to be 200 dollars the second price to be 150 dollars and the third price to be 100 dollars uh, all these are australian um dollars uh victoria okay Chuku, i can see you now can you hear me uh, uh your mic your microphone is up i think you raised your hand to how do i how do i on my microphone uh i don't know how you're going to do that i can't hear you i see you're trying to speak but we can't hear you oh okay I think your microphone should be on now. Can you speak again? Uh, it's off again. It's off again. Uh, we'd really, really love to hear from you and the second Victoria, but I don't know how long we can we can wait for you guys because uh, we need to start um, the program uh, so so sorry about that Um, so uh, sorry, guys. We cannot wait for uh, to get this sorted. We should have had this sorted by now. So these are the prizes, and then they're going to get a free copy of an ebook uh, from me and an access to an online scholarship preparation course. And uh, we we hope that they have interest in securing scholarship to study abroad, and we hope that this course will be useful. So then, so now let's get to meet our winners. I'm going to start from the third position winner, then the second position, and then the the first position um, um, winner. So um, our third position winner is uh, Martins. Uja. So Martin Uja is the third position winner. Can we give him a round of applause, a virtual round of applause? Uh, Martins, congratulations um, for being the third position winner of the Disrupting Mediocrity Challenge, the first edition of the challenge in our group. Um, the second position winner is Victoria Ogechi Uti. Um, she came second in the competition. And our first position winner is another Victoria again. So Victoria Odije is the first position winner. Um, so let's give them a round of applause. Um, so how did we arrive at this? We used um, the requirements that were listed, first of all, we use the requirement that were listed on the on on the announcement 
to look at everybody who participated in the competition. And then we looked at um, Facebook algorithm as well. What Facebook gave to us in terms of engagement uh, with each of the of the posts that were made for the 14 days. And we put everything into um, you know, consideration to arrive at this um, at this conclusion. So uh, the first prize winner is going to receive 200 Australian dollars. The second prize winner is going to receive 150 Australian dollars. And the third prize winner is going to receive 100 Australian dollars in Nigerian equivalent, in Nigerian Naira equivalent at the end of the day. So we'll get in touch with you and we will take it up from there. Um, we hope you will not stop up here. You will continue to to be, um, you know, to use your gift, to be a blessing to uh, the people around you and your generation and also in the group. We hope that you'll continue to bless us in the group. Uh, we hope you will not disappear after now and will not see you again. Uh, we hope that you continue to share. Don't wait until any other challenge to, you know, share your gifts and your talent and potential with us. It's there. Um, and if, if you even want to do a live video session as well, just let us know and we'll, uh, we'll arrange uh, to, I mean, I mean, we're always expanding our team, right? And uh, we have activities every day, every, almost every day of the week in the group and you are free. You're welcome to be part of any of those um, activities. So we, we look forward to um, having you engage more with what we do and, um, and uh, um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. So congratulations and uh, we'll be in touch as soon as possible. Thank you very much. So now um, I'll I'll take you off from the from the group uh, from the stage, and then bring on um, Sule to kick us off for the evening. Uh, Victoria, can you speak? Can you hear me? But still, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. So now they are coming on stage, uh, but. So um, I think we'll just move on to the event, right? So that uh, we don't take too much time. Or we'll, we'll get back to you guys later on. So Sule, I'll bring you on stage now. I hope you were able to come on stage. I've sent you a rest day an invitation. Martins, thank you very, very much for sharing with us. Um, uh, we really totally enjoyed your, your conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you now. Yeah. All right, Mr. Isaac Hidoko, good evening. Good evening, sir. We are ready for you, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to see if... Great, great. Oh, Sule is coming on now. Hello, Mr. Sule, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, how are you? We can hear you, we can see you.
I'm fine, sir. All right. Can you kick us off with uh, an open, a short opening prayer and do an introduction of um, Life Excel uh, vision and? Um... Oh, but I, I can I can't see myself. I'm trying to uh, bring up the video. Yeah, but we can hear you. So if you can do that, uh, we can just kick off and then um, after that we can. Uh, uh, try to see if we can resolve your video. Hello. Um, I want to appreciate everyone for uh, this uh, opportunity, most especially um, the All right, okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the privilege once again uh, to bring the opening prayer and uh, the welcome and uh, life as vision before our participants for tonight. I pray our life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Shall we say a little word of prayer as we proceed um, for, for the session for tonight? Precious Father, we want to th thank you for another privilege and opportunity given to us to, to gather tonight um, to deliberate on issues that has to do with success to deliberate on issues that has to do with uh, um, um, our life career, our life goal. Lord, we ask that Father, may you come and have your way and let your will be done in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. That which we are here for tonight. It's Lord grant us the grace to be able to do it effectively in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for um yesterday's section. I want to thank you for this morning session. I want to thank you for tonight's session. I want to thank you for, for how Doc's far you've been with us. We are asking that Father tonight uh will be different because the Bible. Who say the parts of the righteous is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day? So we ask that Father, Lord God, in heaven, exceptional grace to be able to uh, um, do that which you want us to do, the best of upon each and every one of us us in the name of jesus thank you father because you are worthy to praise in jesus most wonderful name and we do pray amen 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 uh good evening everyone you are welcome to um um to our tonight um program I know you've been tremendously blessed right from yesterday and uh, this morning and tonight is going to be, be, be wow and I know our life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. 
Uh, before I proceed, I would like to let us know who we are, what we are up to, and what we stand to do uh, as life as a, as, um, as a group or as a community of, um, of people. Life is uh, we are a faith based, faith based, um, a youth led, uh, uh, um, non for profit making organization, building a community of people inspiring intentional excellence in each and every one of us to be able to bring that which the God has deposited in every of us to pass. That is what we stand out to do as uh, a community of people. At Live is uh, our vision is to raise a generation of excellent uh, uh, youth, uh, intentional excellent bring are the best in each and every one of us is what we stand out uh, to do as a group of uh, of people. Okay, life is a place where everybody, somebody, it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter what you've passed through in the past, it doesn't matter what you are passing through presently, it doesn't doesn't matter what is happening at, at uh, wherever you are at the moment, because we know there is a future that lies ahead, and that is greatness. So we inspire intentional excellence in each and every one of us. Um, that is why this platform is actually uh, in place. And uh, over the past years, we've been tremendously blessed. And I know your life will never remain the same as well. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Um, permit me to uh, put it this way. Um, for tonight's um, section, uh, we'll be talking about disrupting mediocrity. It's actually um, a program that we've started since yesterday. Uh, we had a session this morning, and um, we'll continue tonight, and we'll be rounding up the program for tonight. And I know your life will never be safe in the name of Jesus. So I want you to, I would like you to fasten your seatbelt because we are about to embark on a journey. You know, destiny is um, it's not um, a, it's, it's a journey, not a destination. Okay, so and as such, we need to uh, be deliberate about when it comes to um, success, when it comes to destiny, and I pray our life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Let me put it this word: in a place where, in a world where anything is possible, be yourself. In a place, in a world where anything is possible be yourself that's what life is they is, is, is out there to do to bring out the best in each and every one of us uh um, is our life goal and we know your life can uh, and we never recommend this same in that name of Jesus. Okay, don't be a local champion. Be a global champion. Think globally. Act globally. And go globally. Hello, hello, Sula. I think that's Sula. Global vision as a community of people. So for tonight, get set. As we fire on, get set as we are here to receive. Get set as we'll be impacted positively. Get set as we uh, will we'll be sent on an errand to um, do the work of the master. And I know our life will never remain the same in the name of possibility and impossibility is a thing of the heart. For the scripture says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so he sees. Hello, so Mr. Sule. Hello, Mr. Sule. Are, are you still with us? Is it failure? Are you still with is us? Is it progress? Is it retrogression? 
So anything you think about yourself, put your hands to work. You believe me, you will see it coming. Hello. I think um, he left. I'm seeing a notification that he left the stage. Um, his network is so horrible. I think we need to just uh, continue. We need to just uh, continue. I don't, I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me see. I can't find him. Hello, can you hear me? I said yeah, I, I can. can. Okay, I can see that he left the stage, so his network um, was very horrible. Okay, I think we'll have to move on. Um, thanks, Sule, for the uh, brief introduction of Life Excel, and um, um, I hope that we'll be able to join. Join if you're listening to to us after this uh, session. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, uh, just by typing in Life Excel. A resource center you see a facebook page and a facebook group come in and uh, we'll be very glad to you know meet you um every week we have one one activity or the other ranging from what we call wisdom key to success and breaking the success meet or success role model we have a a book reading program and every monday we do what we call information monday where people are free to share new information with every member of the group um so I'll be looking forward to you being part of us if uh, you are not there yet. So tonight, I believe it's going to be a very beautiful night. It's, going, it's the last um, session um, um, of the event. And like I said, when I started, uh, we've, we've been, been blessed from different dimensions, different perspectives from yesterday evening when we started. And I know that tonight is not going to be um, different. So we have with us a a very young man who um, his, his wisdom is beyond his age. Like when he speaks, he doesn't speak based on how old he is. And I, I, I can only say that it's God that is working in his life to um, manifest that level of understanding, that level of wisdom. And there are, uh, I, I just thank God for Life Excel and thank God for everyone uh, in, in Life Excel that if there are young people that I can comfortably sit down and listen to, they are these these guys. And Isaac Idoko is one of them. Isaac is um, is uh, um, an expert um, in in. Uh, 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 let me let me just uh, bring this up. Um, Isaac is an internationally trained technical and uh, product manager with Industry Safe, uh, which is an oil and gas um, um, safety company. And he's also a project manager and has served as a contract and procurement engineer. He's an expert when it comes to work and health safety, especially in the oil and gas um, um sector so he's a big man eating oil money um we are we are waiting for that money to be shared with us so uh, but interestingly also isaac was one one time coordinator of life excel at um, Kogi state university um, nigeria where he you know used his leadership skills and expertise to you know successful successfully run and coordinate the activities of life excel during his time and tonight we are privileged to um, have him, you know, speak to us on um, making a difference in your generation in line with the theme of disrupting mediocrity. So, Mr. Isaac, we we are very excited and happy to have you. We'll give you the stage for the next 40 to 45 minutes, and then we'll come back to take questions. If you have any question, if, if there are questions, and then you will round up for for us with a prayer over every of the attendance. So can we give a virtual hand clap to Mr. Isaac as he takes over? Um, hello, good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Um, good evening, 
to you and good evening to everyone. Um, sir, so I felt so emotional while you were talking about me. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm glad for tonight's topic because um, I'm a product of your teachings. I'm a product of your instructions. And um, I'm a product of your guidance. So whatever you see me manifest, whatever you see me do, just like Jesus said, as I see my father do, so also I do. And I've not even started. I've not um, scratched the surface of where you have gone through. Um, we are just on this journey. And I'm grateful for the privilege. I'm thankful to all the leaders and members of Live Excel um, Resource Center. Uh, I would also like to use this opportunity to briefly congratulate all the winners of tonight. Um, I mean, of all the winners of the mediocrity disrupting mediocrity challenge uh, mr martin sujai a young man that i call um scholar because his wisdom and um, and his uh, mentality it's only a scholar can have that kind of wisdom also i'm reading from the two victorias over the um over the course of that challenge it really really opened my eyes to something very unique and that shows that in as much as we say many nigerians do not read mm. like i heard from um, chimamanda Gozi Adiche, she said that she do not believe she did not believe that many nigerians do not read or they don't want to read she said when you create a platform an opportunity for them and make it affordable there are so many of them that you will be amazed at what they can come up with and within the course of this challenge i've also witnessed that and i want to say congratulations yeah all right um, and congratulations to you too on your on your baby boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yes today was his naming ceremony i had to run from there and leaving the guests just to make it here Thank so tonight you. very 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 briefly um we would like to look at a very unique topic um james spoke yesterday that the head was rolling um Dr. Ojoma also spoke this morning that from the feedbacks and everything, everywhere was on fire. So, like I told James, you know, there was a time uh, Papa Iadeboye was invited to Living Faith to have a message. And after Bishop Boyedepo had spoken and uh, did all the introduction, he collected the mic, that is um, Iadeboye. And he said, what does a pastor have to say when a bishop has already spoken? <laughs> <laughs> you know he is by title pastor here and uh, we have bishop david Oedipo. so he now said what does the pastor has to say when the bishop has already spoken that is that is um, on the sideline anyways so i just want to say that james and Ojima, they've done a very um great job but tonight we are going to still look at when you open your heart you will always learn something and um, making a difference in your generation creating a generational excellence and then also a mindset as spoken by James. All of them can be tied to one thing when you have a teachable spirit and when you have a spirit of learning, mm. no matter who, where, and how. What is important is opening your heart to learn. Um, I used to tell people, comedians that everybody listen to and then they laugh. There is hardly any comedian that I listen to and watch without me picking a lesson mm. through their jokes. I've learned a lot from comedians, a lot. So there's none, just like they say, in every nonsense, there's a sense in it. So also, tonight, no matter who must have spoken, no matter what you must have learned, I tell you again that we are going to see a new thing. And I hope and believe that we are all open, opening our hearts to learn. So we move straight to the uh, point, which is making a difference in your generation making a difference in your generation. This is a very, very unique topic um, that we need at this stage and at this moment in our lives in Nigeria, where young people um, barely and hardly, many young people hardly believe in um, the right thing, the process, um, where many people hardly believe in hard work, where many people hardly believe in doing the right thing all most people run after is basically making an announcement get the money 
spend the money and that's the end of it mm. but when you really want to make a difference in your generation you don't run after those things and as i start making a difference in your generation basically begins with creating a value wow making a difference in your generation solely and mainly begins with thinking about value working out process of creating value and indeed creating that value so tonight i ask us a question what is the greatest impact we can have in our own lives what is the greatest impact we can have in our own lives it, is it just to um have little money buy a car um maybe marry just like myself give back to, to a bouncing baby boy like myself and do a naming ceremony and then you say oh i'm making a difference because i now have next generation is that what you're thinking is that your own mindset have you ever heard have you ever heard of the phrase writing your name on the sounds of time writing your name on the sounds of time have you ever heard it and if you have ever heard it what does that mean to you what does writing your name on the sounds of time mean to you you know children thinks about today but sons thinks about posterity mm. children just like when you give birth to just like my son now when you when you give birth to them and as they are growing as they are young all they are thinking about is today they want to eat they want to feed they want to go to school they need this they think about today but true sons think about posterity hmm. so making a difference in your generation the first one i said it all begins with thinking about value creating value it also has to do with thinking about posterity posterity and what is posterity really posterity simply means future generation or an existence that outlive you hmm. so to make an impact in your generation for us to be able to make this impact in our generation in our lives we must think about posterity we must think about posterity many people many people in our generation thinks and strive for po prosperity listen to me clearly many people in our generation think and strive for prosperity prosperity only very few think about posterity i hope those words are clear prosperity and posterity hello sir are those words clear to you yes go go on i'm okay. with you i'm taking notes okay so yes many people strive and struggle for prosperity just very few people think about posterity so as we go go out every day as we um look for jobs as we um think about entrepreneurship or as we do everything all many people think about is prosperity god bless me god bless me god give me car god give me a job god give me that many of us this is these are all we all pray for every day these are all we all think about but very few people think about posterity and can i just chuck many of us those that think about posterity gets prosperity faster than those that chases prosperity hmm. those that thinks about posterity those that thinks about values that out, outlive them they get sustainable prosperity more and faster and better than those that all their struggles is or are, are committed to striving for prosperity so i tell you i tell us tonight prosperity may give you immediate gratification prosperity may give you immediate gratification but posterity breeds and bet sustainable solutions prosperity may give you immediate gratification just like okay i've got this money i can buy this can or oh, those are immediate gratification but posterity grants you and breeds 
sustainable solutions that outlive us. The question tonight is, what drives you? Is it prosperity or is it posterity? What drives you really? You know your struggle. As you think about that entrepreneurship, as you think about that job, as you think about the book, as you think about the struggle, as you think about everything, what drives you? Is it posterity or is it prosperity? You we have to know the difference before we can know and make a difference in our generation. Now, having given us this whole background about you know making a difference. And then starting with prosperity and posterity and creating a value i want to, to tell us tonight that how then do you make a generational impact or make a difference in your generation hmm. how number one number one point is identify your message and purpose identify your message and purpose it is what you know that you show i repeat that it is what you know that you show and like it is popularly known i don't know if you have legal um uh, practitioners in the house but they have a popular phrase that says nemo that latin word that says nemo that quod non habit meaning that you cannot give what you don't have it is what you know that you should. So for you to be able to make a generational impact, for you to make a, dif a difference in your generation, for you to be recognized, and for you to be able to do what outlives you and what your generation itself will recognize, you must identify your message. A lot of people, you know, a lot of us, hate monday to fridays a lot of us once it's sunday we 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 our hearts begins to to skip <laughs> but when it's friday we begin to rejoice we begin to you know and um, shout and all now there is a lesson in that and there's a question in that for many of us that hate monday to friday and only rejoice saturday and sunday do you really want to live your life and build your life around sunday and saturday hmm. so for those that makes a difference in their generation they are never scared of mondays they are never scared of tuesdays they are wow. never scared of wednesdays they are never scared of thursdays and they are never scared of fridays like james said yesterday for you to be a winner you must fight Hmm. So we we all want to make this money. We all want to make this mark. But you hate Mondays. But you hate Tuesdays. So when are you going to fight before you win? So for you to make a difference in your generation, you must identify your purpose. You must identify your message. You must. It is purpose. It is your message. And it is your vision that gives you relevance in life. It is your purpose. It is your message. And it is your vision that gives you relevance in life. <laughs> oh, I would just say, thank God I'm Sunday. No one gets to hit me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Right? But I tell us again that for us to make a generational impact, for us to make a difference in our generation, we must all be fighters. We must all be fighters. So, you must be ready to fight. I must be ready to fight. Many graduates, upon dropping their pen after final paper and probably after NYC, all they chase after is jobs or maybe skills or lend this and lend that. Only very few of them, only very few of them sit down to ask themselves, what is my message and what is my purpose? Wow. And it is one of the reasons why we have so many young people gallivanting around with certificates 
without value. Wow. <laughs> when you ask them, what is your message? What is your purpose? What do you really want to become? I can tell you the truth because I've asked many. I can have asked many. When you ask them, and I can also challenge anyone on this thing to ask 10 people on our list that what is your message especially in nigeria for instance what what is your purpose where, where do you see yourself in the next five years where do you see yourself in the next two years where do you see yourself in the next 10 years only about three to about three to four out of ten can give you a clear-cut answer in so some we, cases we have a lot of work to do in life excel we still have work uh, to do absolutely we do have a lot of work to do we do have a lot of work to do so only there are some there are some cases where only one only about one to two only about one to two will be able to tell you what is their purpose in life some will just tell you i just want to get married some will just tell you i just want to get that job some will tell you i just want to start that business but the question is what is your value so to make a difference in your generation you must understand the question what is my purpose what is my purpose you have to conduct you know it is vision and it is your message and it is your purpose that conduct your entire life that is what you know that is what um, moves you around your entire life this helps to guide you when you identify your message when you identify your purpose in life it helps to guide you on what time am i spending what am i spending time on for how long is this time meant to be spent and what is the deadline when is the deadline so until you have identified your purpose you spend your time chatting on whatsapp chatting with friends what do you do most of the time hello have you eaten how are you the next how many minutes have you eaten? How are you? How is that? But those that are willing to make a difference in their generation have clearly written goal, vision, and purpose that are time-bound and time are allocated to each of them. Those that have identified their message and those that have identified their purpose do not spend their time anyhow. Now, how can you identify your message? How can you identify your purpose? Because if we said that, one of the reasons why many people are gallivanting around is because they have not identified their purpose. So how then? Because it's a very big question for many that they ask, how can I identify my purpose? How can I identify what I am meant to achieve? A, or number one of it is believe and trust that you were born with a specific purpose and a message. You have to believe and trust that you were born with a specific message and a specific purpose. It all starts with a belief. Many of us, because of our background, many of us, because of our environment, never believe that we have anything to offer. And that has blinded us from our inner message, inner 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 yearnings that is telling us what we are or what we are created to achieve. So you must at all times know and you must at all times believe that you were created with a specific purpose and with a specific message. Just like when our leader in the house, um, at the point he came into Nigeria, um, I, I remember, I think I was still the project um, coordinator of Live Excel then, and he asked a question at the point that our leaders born our leaders born i will never forget that question many people get different answer but he said something very very spectacular he said every human being on earth is born with the potential to lead every man is born with the potential to lead like Isaac Newton also said in one of his laws, a body will continue to remain in a state of rest until, an, until a force is exerted. Yeah. So every man is born with a potential to lead, but we all must, we must 
develop that potential. We must move from, you know, in physics, we have potential energy and we have kinetics. When you are born with this potential, that is latent. It is hidden. But we almost, over time, convert that potential into a kinetic energy. It has to move. For you to make a difference in your generation, you must stop relying on your potential. You must trust mm. and believe that, yes, you were born with this potential, and then you begin to work on it, and then you begin to value it, and then you begin to be disciplined about it, and then you begin to create that value. Be part on how you can identify your message. Is You have to listen more. You have to listen more to yourself rather than gallivanting around searching for jobs, searching for something that is not missing. See, the truth of the matter is that for many of us, what we are looking for is never missing. If only we are, we make ourselves available, if only we make ourselves ready to listen more and to just go extra mile. So, I tell us again that we must be ready to listen to ourselves because when you listen to yourself after all the prayers, fears, lamentations, and hunger, you will always find a solution. There are many of us that go to church from all night to all night, make all manner of prayers, but we cannot sit down to listen to our inner mind and to be able to identify our purpose. Not because God is not speaking. God is always speaking, yeah. but we are never listening. We are too busy with activities. We are too busy with the noise. We are too busy with distractions. So we must be ready to listen to ourselves. And then the another point under that, how to identify your messages, you must identify your passions, your values, and your goals. You see, what we call purpose, most of the time, if you are able to identify your value, if you are able to identify your passion, if you are able to identify your, your goals, therein, inside, you'll be able to find your purpose in life. True life as well, I was able to identify my purpose and my goals early. I was able to identify my passion. I know what gives me peace. I know what gives me joy. Over time, I've had to turn down some jobs that may look pain. Yeah. Mm. You know, it just like everybody apply for all kinds of jobs. Those that have identified their message do not identify for all kinds of jobs. Yeah, that's true. Any man that has identified his or her message do not. Yeah. It is not about the money. It is about the value. Yeah. So I tell people, today you see, oh... Uh, civil defense is a critical, you know, you are going to apply. Tomorrow is bank job, you are applying. You are applying. Next, tomorrow is oil and gas job, you are applying. Hmm. Day after tomorrow is marketing. The question is, who are you and what do you want? Who are you and what do you want? Exactly. So who are you and what do you want? Because for you to make a difference in your generation, you must have a focus. Those that moves from, you know, there are so many people that are, that are like um, branches of trees. Every wind that comes blows them. Every wind that comes, it blows them off. Because they have not been able to identify their purpose. Because they have not been able to identify their values. And because they have not been able to identify their message. So the question is, who are you? What is your purpose and what drives you? Number two of, you know, how to um, make a difference in your generation. Yeah. Having identified your purpose and having identified your message in life. The number two key thing, the number two key thing that we all must do is communication of our ideas and purpose communication communication and communication now there are so many people in life that have identified maybe their purpose and their message but they are not fulfilling it 
not because that purpose is not true, but because they have closed their mind from conveying this message and from communicating this purpose to those that are always ready and God has placed them to help you expand and develop this purpose. There are so many people that are around that God has positioned to give life to your purpose. Hmm. For every purpose, there are people well positioned to give life to them. But when you starve these people of this information, when you starve those people of this information, you may never ever fulfill your purpose. And let me give us a practical example. Many of us, either you are here as a Christian or as um, a Muslim or whatever religion that you belong to, we have all been hearing about Jesus. He has a purpose. He has a calling and he had a message while on earth. And what was what, and what was, was his purpose? To do the work of the Father and bring salvation to man. But when Jesus came, he knew that only him cannot fulfill that destiny. He knew that only him cannot fulfill that purpose. And he identified men that have been positioned, 12 of them, to fulfill that purpose, including Judas Iscariot. Remember, Judas was also positioned to fulfill that purpose because somebody has to betray the master. The master has to die. The master has to be hung. So Jesus did not hide his purpose and his mission from these people. He communicated them. He communicated them, and that is why they were with him. Because only Jesus couldn't have been feeding the 5,000 people. Only Jesus couldn't have been doing this and that. For every assignment, for every city that he went to, the disciples were always there to carry out one assignment or the other. He understood his purpose. First, he identified his purpose. And number two, he identified the people that have to assist him in accomplishing this purpose. So whenever, to make a difference in your generation, having identified your purpose, you must identify and you must communicate this particular purpose with these people. Mark Zuckerberg, I read, when he wanted to start up Facebook, he had, I think, five friends. I, I can't remember the number clearly. And he communicated this idea and called all of them together. Three did not believe. Two followed him. And they were able to achieve something. Believe me, only Mark wouldn't have been able to turn these things around. He had people that he communicated the, the ideas to. And they were able to come up with a solution. I read a book and I've shared it before called Shoe Dog. All right. Where um, it was explained how Nick or Nike came about. The name Nike that later became one of the most popular brands for sports and for even our own um, home use was not even birthed by the owner of Nike itself. It was birthed by a team member that he communicated the ideas to. When um, they were deliberating on what to do. What am I saying? You all, myself and you, when you have a purpose, when you have a vision, when you have a goal, when you have an idea and when you have a message, you must identify those that have been at every junction of our lives. There are those that have been positioned to listen to us and to give us a guide. You must. You must. There are those that have, no matter where you want to be in life, there are those that are that are already grown with wings and are flying. No matter where you want to get to in life, there are those that have already developed wings in that destination and that are flying. All you need to do is identify these people. Identify those with wings in that particular place and fly on their wings. Some call it angel's wings. So wherever you want to be in life, there are many that have developed wings in that section, in that area, in that unit, in that career, in that business. 
I've I always loved Isaac Newton because his life and his story is so practical to me. When he was asked, one of the secrets to your achieving success, he said, I stand on the shoulders of those that have gone ahead of me and see far where they could not see. So communicating your ideas to the right people, mostly to those that have gone ahead of you, is basically giving you wings to even see beyond the people that are guiding you. Again, I ask you a question. I don't know how many of us have heard of what to call intergenerational less change. There's what to call intergenerational less change. And I'm going to explain very briefly. Intergenerational less change simply means bringing, bringing the ideas of the current generation with the experience of the older generation and out of it, fashion out a solution. For every idea that you have, there's already an experience. Mm -hmm. Always note it. For every idea that you have, there's always an experience. It may not be exact, but there must be always something very similar that will be that will give you a guide. So intergenerational lesson, like I've explained, is bringing the ideas, when you bring your ideas together, and then you merge it with the experience. For example, um, I have an idea of securing a scholarship abroad. I have an idea and I have a plan of trying to study abroad. But there is somebody that has gone there and studied via scholarship and assisting people. He has an experience. When I bring, which is a, a mentor in the house, uh, Dr. Apelmedi, when I bring my idea of trying to secure a scholarship with the experience of where he failed, how many times and how he was able to secure telling you the papers how to get a um, project supervisor how to do this when you merge both of them together it results into success so for you to make a difference in your generation you must communicate you must believe in you must believe and implement what we call intergenerational exchange and when you do this too when you do this too after you must have identified your purpose and after you must have communicated this, your idea and your purpose. The last thing, one of the last things that you need to do is you begin to build a tribe. You begin to build a community. <laughs> you see, to make a difference, genuine difference is to outlive us. Hmm. Genuine difference, they always outlive us. Exactly, Odemar's message this morning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I love being practical when I teach because I love bringing things home, let people see it, and that is why my even as some people call me a motivational speaker, my own kind of motivation is so practical, and they, I always apply them from my life or from the life of those ahead of me, so they are not fic fictions. Okay. So. One of the, the examples of making a generational difference is what our mentor in the house also has done. He was only a lecturer in Kogi State University, like every other person. There were many lecturers, some late, some still alive, that every student passed through. And at the end of the day, just like Methuselah, Methuselah lived for 969 years, and the only record the Bible had about him was, and Methuselah died. But Jesus lived for just three and a half years, and they call him ancient of days. The difference between these two people was never the age. It is simply the impact. Like Dr. Miles Monroe, one of the men that has inspired me so much, will always say, he said, do not even strive to die old, strive to die empty. Dying old does not equate dying full of impact. But when you die empty, it means you are living with purpose fulfilled. So our mentor in the house started very um, like every other person in the university. And he, you know, uh, he decided that I want to make a difference in my generation. 
And the only way to make this difference with the vision that God has given me is simply to start building a tribe. And you started Life Excel. There were many people before us in Life Excel. You know, to make a difference in your generation, even communicating these ideas and trying to build a tribe, not many people, not everybody that you start with will, will end with you. Judas Iscariot did not end with Jesus. But did Jesus fulfill his purpose? Yes, he did. Yeah. So you may not be able to affect everybody, but you can make a difference with one life. Mm. So Dr. Pep started Life Excel on campus and started organizing um, students. You can imagine a man whose pay maybe probably will be 100,000. But organizing students are using out of his salary because as a lecturer, you have to be engaging in research, development, if you must grow and if you must be promoted. So one of the reasons why, especially in Nigeria, that you see some lecturers, maybe so a bit, let me use that word, but forgive me, a bit wretched or not doing so well. It's not because their salaries, yes, we know that their salaries are not really uh, um, good enough, but it's manageable. But one of the reasons basically is as the salary and as these monies are going, they're going to research. You have to publish, you have to go around, you have to do this. So Dr. Pear must have been just like every other person. Just like every other person, just, okay, I need to research, I need to do this as my salary is coming. I need to cater for my dad, my mom, my siblings and all. That money was very meager, but he would always out of it, give the organizers to make sure that there's refreshment for those that attend, we print uh, uh, programs, we print all, pay for all, pay for this. And then from there, later, many, many of the students began to see vision, uh, see future with the vision. And some people started supporting 1,000, sometimes 500, sometimes 200. Yeah, yeah. But, but he was building a tribe. Let me tell you one thing. If Dr. Pear was not building a tribe, Life Excel would have been dead by now, God forbid. Because immediately he left Nigeria and focused on his activity abroad. Some of the tribes, some of the tribesmen he built took over. Hmm. Somebody like uh, Pastor Itaye Emmanuel, somebody like Kenito, somebody like Haroyo Sunday, somebody like Lydia, somebody like Juliet, all of them took over and the campus was on fire. It was because of the tribe that Dr. Pell was building that people like Uja Martins came on board. It was because of the tribe that people like um, Omotola and the rest of them came on board, even Dr. Ojoma. So what am I trying to say? When you identify your purpose, when you identify and communicate these ideas, if you really want to make an impact and if you really want posterity to speak for you, you must begin to raise a tribe. You must begin to raise a community. You know, no matter how intelligent and how gifted you are, you can never succeed alone or in, in isolation. No matter how gifted, no matter how blessed you are. I have a friend, uh, I know that um, Dr. Pem may know him. His name is Stanley. He is um, he's a graphic designer and printer and all. I met him in one Nemekanobi's program in Abuja, and this guy, just like every other person, he may start, he may just say, "Oh, yes, uh, you have to, uh, you have to pay me before I teach you." No, this guy did something. He started organizing free graphic design and all this thing for people. And through that, if I tell you what Stanley, the generation that Stanley has been able to raise, it will amaze you. And sometimes when we communicate. He's now living larger than his expectation. For you to make a difference in your generation, you must be aware of immediate and urgent gratification. Mm. Because one of the things is so many people with gifts and talents, one of the things that really destroy them early is the issue of, you know, you have to pay me for everything. Well, I have also have a... Um, I won't call him a son or a mentee, but he always looks up to me like a mentor and um, I've always counseled him. This guy is an artist. His name is Alexander Peter Idoko. He's an artist. Um, when we're in KSU, 
there's this he discovered his purpose early and his own was using graphics using drawing to just portray messages and all that so he was not really when school resumes he always stay back late at home to just finish his work and all he started with free um ads for people he drew dr paul and Enche, drew so many people and just trying to, to do all of that before you know his destiny opened up just by doing that before you know he got recognized he was one of the two africans invited to washington dc as we speak this guy run in millions hmm. this guy run in millions you can check him out you can just type alexander peter idoko he has been invited he, ha he already has his art gallery in abuja he's always traveling to the u.s traveling every channels tv and all media houses are coming for him no no talent is small it's discovering your purpose exactly no talent is small i remember when this guy was coming to me on campus always coming to no my room Sir, this is what i want to do this is what this is where my passion lies this is and i kept guiding him kept guiding him on what to do how to balance with his academics but as i'm telling to you as i'm talking to you where this guy is talking about money i'm a boy just oh, by drawing god i'm just looking at his profile now jesus oh you're looking at his profile yes thank god so twenty thousand followers just, on instagram Twenty thousand followers on instagram you can check him there's no tv station in nigeria that has not interviewed him no talent is small no talent is small it's just by drawing of purpose so you more you need as you grow in life you need soldiers that believe in your vision you are never a successful man or woman until you are able to raise a successful su successor who will run with your vision after you i say that again you are never a successful man or woman until you are able to raise a successful successor who will run with your vision after you martin luther king jr died how many years ago and one of his speeches that amazes me and that always strikes my heart whenever i listen to it he says i have a dream that one day on the red hills of georgia the children of the former slaves and the children of the former slaves masters shall sit and dine together on the table of brotherhood do you know what that means said on the red hills of georgia that is dc the children of the former slaves who are the former slaves the blacks the people that were maltreated the people that were that were killed and done no matter of things to he said and the children of the former slave masters who were the former slave masters the white he said they shall sit together and dine on the table of brotherhood he began to raise men he began to he began his advocacy he began to speak to the conscience of the people and let me tell you, in 2008, Barack Obama broke that record, and that particular vision came to pass when Obama ascended the throne as the president of the United States of America. Then, indeed, the children of the former slaves and the children of the former slave masters came together to dine on the Red of Georgia, on the table of brotherhood. So, you are never a successful man. You have not achieved anything until you begin to raise tribe, until you begin to raise soldiers. Jesus, despite his anointing, raised 12 tribes of men. His ministry would have maybe died after his death. Maybe nobody would have remembered Christianity afterwards. Because remember, the name Christianity and the name Christians did not come when Jesus was alive. It came after him. And that name did not even come by the, that name did not even come by apostles or by prophets or may, probably by believers that name came when the people saw the way the apostles were behaving and they said oh these people behave like christ they have the nature and the likeness of christ therefore the apostles were called christians for the first time jesus raised tribe he raised a community his ministry and maybe Christ, christianity that we are bearing today wouldn't have been there if Jesus did not raise a tribe that believed in his vision, in his purpose, and in his message. 
And if he had even raised them and he did not communicate it to them, man, his ministry would have just died. Remember, it was unbelievers, like I said, that saw them probably and called them Christians. And let me just give us one example again that struck me. Jesus told Peter something. <laughs> he said, Simon, Simon, the devil has decided and chosen to sift you as a wheat. He said, but I myself, I have prayed for you. But this is the, the striking part. He said, but when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Ah, ah. What does that mean to you? When thou art converted, see, when you are saved, when you, when you have this understanding, when this assignment is handed over to you, he said, strengthen thy brethren, meaning that begin to raise them, begin to raise a tribe, begin to lead them, begin to be the one, begin to be their guide. Raise a community. You need to raise a community. You need to raise a community. So to make a difference in your generation, you must be a man that has identified his purpose. You must be a woman that has identified his purpose. You must communicate this purpose. You must communicate these ideas to the right people, not to the wrong people. And then, like I said, for every purpose, for every idea, there are already people with wings flying. All that you need is just to communicate it Sit on their wings and see yourself fly. Sit on their wings and see yourself fly. And when you do that, begin to raise a community. Begin to raise a tribe. Begin to raise soldiers. Jesus told Peter, say, strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen thy brethren. So tonight I ask us, who are you strengthening? Your ideas, you can speak. You can, you can design, you can sing, you can do all that. Who are you strengthening? Who are you raising? If you are not raising anybody and you are not doing anything, you are still a child. Remember I said children thinks about today. Sons thinks about posterity. While prosperity is for immediate gratification, posterity breeds sustainable solution and impact. As I ask us the final question tonight, do you really want your name on the sands of time? Or you just want people to remember you for an elaborate wedding or elaborate burial, and that is the end of it? Remember, Methuselah lived for 969 years. The only record about him was, and Methuselah died. Jesus lived for 33 and a half years, and he has always been called the Ancient of Days. The difference is the impact, the difference they have made in their generation. So I ask us tonight and I challenge our hearts that as we move in our daily lives, and then very importantly as I close, to make a difference in your generation does not mean you need to have 20, 30, 50 people before you raise a tribe. You can start with one person. You can start with two persons. You can start with three persons. You don't need multitude. All you need is the quality of people around you. So please start now and start early. We don't have eternity to fulfill destiny. We only have time. We don't have eternity. Eternity is infinite. Time is finite. We don't have eternity to fulfill destiny. We only have time. So start now and start early. Identify your purpose. Communicate it and begin to raise tribes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, oh my God. I don't even I don't even know what to say. I don't I don't know what to say at all. I don't have any single thing to say. Um it's just it's just too too strong too strong too strong um i, I think you should just continue and um and uh, lead, just lead us in in prayer in in line with what you have shared 
for everyone who is listening live and for everyone who would listen to a replay after now. You're muted. All right, thank you so much, sir. Like I said, um, we do not have eternity to fulfill this thing. We only have time. Yeah. And that time that we have is always limited. So for us to make a difference in our generation, we have to identify our purpose. But to identify your purpose, there is only one man mm. that can lead you without confusion. When he shows you the way, you will never miss your way. Yeah. And he's, he always tells us, say, Lo, I'm with you always. He tells us, he said, when you seek me, you shall find. So, for you to identify your purpose, one of the key things is knowing the master, yeah. the giver of life. Yep. I used to tell people, you may not believe in God, you may not believe in Jesus or believe in Muhammad or believe in anything. But one thing should give you a fear. How did I appear on earth? And when I leave here, where am I going? How did I appear here? Were you just giving birth to out of a blue moon? So you must have the connection with the giver of life. Who is the man that can easily and quickly give you clarity? Also, I told some of my colleagues, um, I always tell them, the church can be attacked anytime. People can just, people can just um, insult and castigate the church as they want in our generation. But the truth of the matter is this. There is no one religion, there's no one organization on earth that has done anything to the world up to a quarter of what the church has done to the world yeah. and for the world. Remember, about eight presidents of the United States of America are products of Harvard University. Harvard is a church, which is a church school. Harvard is a school built by the church. Harvard currently have about 188 billionaires alive. What billionaires alive? This was a church founded by school. When you go to Cambridge, when you go to Oxford, the same story. Go to Yale, same story. As a matter of fact, the man that found MIT, Rogers, was a professor from uh, Williams and Mary. All these were schools, things done by the church to help the world. The innovation, when you talk about uh, Silicon Valley, go and read their history. It all began from the church. Why am I saying this? It shows us that for you to know your purpose in life, you need to be connected to the master. It did not fail them from the past. Imagine if Harvard was not there. Imagine if Cambridge, if Oxford was not there. The health situation of the world, the innovation, the ideas. So you must be close to the master. You must come back. You need to be connected to the master and the giver of life. Who is the man that can easily help you to identify your purpose? So tonight, I want to pray with us that as we have cheered tonight, in case there's anyone with confusion, in case there's anyone with, with a closed mind, in case there's anyone with a procrastinated heart and spirit, I pray for you. As you choose to get connected to the master, the giver of purpose, the giver of life, I know that the clarity you need to fulfill destiny shall be established tonight in the name of Jesus. And I also pray for you that for as you try to communicate your ideas, you shall not meet the wrong people. Amen. And I pray for you that as you build your tribe, you shall build noble men and women mm -hmm. that will carry on with your vision. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you because you know that you always hear us. Mm -hmm. And in case you are here and you have not known this master, he's the giver of peace, he's the giver of life. And you would want to know him. You can pray the prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you tonight. I ask 
that you forgive all my shortcomings. I know that I've been living for myself. I've been so confused all the years. I've been so confused all my years. But tonight, I need to know my purpose. I need to know why I'm here. Please show me the way. Help me to live for you. Help me that as I struggle, as I fall, I rise again. Mm -hmm. That in my weakness, you shall be my strength. That on the cross, you already said done. So I believe that all I need to fulfill destiny has already been done. All I need to do is to identify it. Thank you, Master Jesus, because you've heard me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Isaac. Um, like, I can't even just say anything. Uh, I've, I, I mean, I, like I said, I just don't have anything to say. The only thing I know is that God has given us this vision. God has given us this this work to do. And whenever we have taken a step, whenever we have made a move, we've always seen God show up, you know. And um, I'm grateful to God for you know that opportunity to be uh, in His purpose as far as this work we're doing is concerned. I'm grateful to everyone that has given himself or herself to this work as well. Uh, my prayer is that God will continue to increase everyone who has spoken over the past two days and over the past three sessions, starting from from uh, Mr. James and to Ojom and then to, to yourself, Mr. Isaac. I pray that God will continue to increase his wisdom upon your lives i pray that god will Amen. continue to increase his grace Amen. and his oil upon your lives and that uh, god will cause you to fulfill your own purpose and you will not you will not lose track of your purpose you will not lose track of your of your destiny Amen. whatever god has sent you here to do you will you will do them and you will not just do them like an ordinary man or an ordinary woman you will do it excellently Amen. You will continue to stand out. Amen. You will continue to radiate excellence and show forth the glory of God Amen. in everything you're doing by the virtue of the spirit behind the vision. Amen. This is my prayer and my desire for for um, for, for you Amen. and for every member of Life Excel. Um, this is a very beautiful way to bring this to a close. You know, we started from a, a very high level and then we come down to a very sober level where we need to, you know, ask ourselves uh, some deep questions, you know, connecting it to what we learned yesterday. Um, so I, I encourage everyone who has been part of this this event to, to go back. We will leave the replays. I'm not going to end the meeting. Um, uh, I'll leave the replays for maybe a few more days so that people can go back and, uh, you, know, or, you know, watch the replays if, if they want um, and learn some of these things that uh, have been shared with us over the past uh, three sessions. And then after that, we'll, we'll maybe put them down, put them on our YouTube channel for, for it to be perpetually there for everyone all over the world to, to you know, watch. So uh, I want to thank everyone who has made this possible. I want to appreciate every team member um, in Life Excel for the past um, two two months. We have been working very hard uh, towards this event, uh, starting from the challenge, planning for the challenge, and then planning for this particular event. All the meetings we've been having and uh, all the test run we had with this particular platform to make sure that everybody understood how to navigate it. Um, so I really, really appreciate every team member and I pray that God will bless you. I want to thank everyone who um, joined as a participant live during the sessions and everyone who is going to listen to the videos or the recordings later on after now. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing your time um, with us and I also pray that uh, whatever you desire that God will grant you, uh, especially that your life may excel. Um, so this is where we draw disrupting mediocrity to a close. If you want to stay back to connect, you can you can you can um, go to the 
in the lounge and join any of the rooms and they continue the conversation there with anyone who is there. Uh, I'll also go to the lounge to see if there's anybody there before I shut down completely. Um, but I want to thank you, everybody, for, for joining this session and uh, for participating in all the sessions. I don't know, someone was raising their hand. Okay, maybe the person has canceled. Um, so we, we, we really, really thank you. We'll continue to engage in the group. Um, so Life Excel is found on Facebook. Life Excel is found on Twitter. Life Excel is found on on Instagram. Uh, on Facebook, we have the page and the group. So join the group, like the page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and uh, we have a website which we're still building. And um, just you know, look for us around and be part of what we're doing because uh, next year we are coming up with. Um, a whole lot of packages that I believe would be a blessing to us. But uh, what we've heard today is enough to keep us firing and thinking about what we want to ex what what we expect God to do in our lives in the coming year. So I want to thank everybody, and I, I want to wish you a very good evening wherever you're watching live from, and um, very good morning or very good afternoon whenever you watch the replay. Uh, God bless you, and may your life continue to excel. Thank you, Mr. Isaac. Let's give everybody a virtual hand clap, a round of applause. Before, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Before finally round up. Thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you. All right, so we'll meet at the backstage.